let us understand some beautiful concept of logic gates student logic gates are basic building blocks of any digital circuits whether you take counter you take finite state machine you take flip flop you take multiplexers any digital circuit if you consider if you open up that what is present inside that so you'll find there are the logic gates so using logic gates we can design any digital circuit as per our requirements so we need to understand what are the different category of logic gates we have how does they function so basically in our course we are interested to know the input output behavior so broadly student logic gates are classified into three category basic gates universal gate and the special gates so the basic boolean operator not not and or so they comes in the category of basic gates nand gate nor gate they comes in the category of universal gates because any boolean function can be implemented only using nand gates or it can also be implemented only using nor gates you don't need any other gate if you have sufficient number of nor gate or sufficient number of nand gate so in that sense we call them as the universal gates and two more gate namely xor and xnor gate so we call them as the special gates so in gate exam what is point of view if you see xor gate having highest weightage because there are scope of framing good number of questions so we get many questions from xor gate sometimes from xnor gate and questions from these gates are relatively less compared to this so let us understand the concept of xor gates <coughs> so xor gates friends this is also known as exclusive or gate some people write it is ex slash or xor or some people write xor gate something like this it is as per your convenience you can use whichever things you want the logic symbol of xor gate is something like this so it's a or gate and then you have a curve line so a curve line followed by a or gate is nothing but the xor gates if a and b are the input to this xor gate then the output is a xor b so a plus sign inside a circle represents xor operator right y equal to xor b now what is the logic actually based on what logic uh, you get the output at the xor gates so remember students in most of the cases in textbooks they do the discussion up to two variable but in the gate exam you see there are many situations where we have to deal with three variable four variables so in that sense i have given you this particular statement that output of a xor gate is logic one if there are odd number of ones present in the input combination else this output is zero so what it means is suppose i have a multi input xor gate like this so it is having so many number of inputs let's say 1 2 3 4 5 6 number of inputs i have suppose the inputs are 0 1 1 0 1 0 so like this or any other combination of these inputs are given now what is the outputs so that is what you have to check in the input side how many number of ones are there whether the number of ones is odd or not if number of one is odd then answer is 1 if not the answer is 0 so for a two variable case so if you write the combination of a and b you have four combinations so you see that in the this and this combination how many number of ones are there one number of one is there one is odd number yes so output is 1 and 1 so in the first row how many ones are there you have zero number of ones zero is odd or even number even number so output is zero you need the condition output is one when odd number of one present in the input combination here you have two number of one which is again a even number so output is zero so how do you write the <coughs> logical expression of this uh, xor so if you go in the min term way then it is you have to concentrate this and this row so for this we get a bar b because zero is variable bar one is variable so a bar b plus this is ab bar a bar b plus ab bar this is what is your uh, mean term notation or this sop notation if you want to go by max term so you have to concentrate the first row and the last row in the first row you have 0 0 so for this you'll be writing a plus b and for the last row it is 1 1 you'll be writing a bar plus b bar because 1 is variable complement 0 is variable in the max term notation so you get a plus b here you get a bar plus b bar here okay now uh, one more fact trends is this is very important that is inverter and buffer application of xor gates so what happens is like if you take a xor gate one of the input you connect it to variable a 
other input you connect it to logic 0. So the output is a x or 0 and if you find what is a x or 0 you get it is a. So whatever the input you have given the same thing is transmitted to output if one of the input is fixed to 0. So buffer means input and output logic are same there is no change in the input and output logic except a delay. So whatever the input you are giving the same thing you will be getting at output after some amount of finite delay that is what we mean by the buffer application. Similarly, if we uh, give one of the input as 1, so a x or 1 if you find it out you get it is a bar. That means if you are connecting one of the input to logic 1, then whatever you give in the other input, so you get its complement at the output. So this is called the uh, inverter application of XOR gate. So if you want to make use uh, XOR gate as buffer, you connect one of the input to logic 0. If you want to use one of the input as logic 1, okay. So then it will work like a inverter or a not gate. Now you may ask, sir, how A X or 0 is A? If you have this doubt, in this uh, function, you substitute B equal to 0. So what is Y of A comma 0? I am simply substituting B equal to 0. So you get A bar dot 0 plus A dot 0 complement. A bar dot 0 is 0, A dot 0 complement. 0 complement is 1, A. So you get it is A. So A X or 0 is A. Right? And if you want to know how A X or 1 is A bar, you can again substitute in this relation, you substitute B equals to 1. If you do that, so it is A bar dot 1 plus A dot 1 complement. So this is anyway 0, so it is A bar. Right? So if one of the input is fixed to 1, then whatever you give in the other one, you get output its complement. If one of the input is fixed to 0, whatever you give in the other one, you get the same thing as it is. I will show you some questions which are related to these all property. Let us first understand this property in detail way, then we will take the questions. Okay. Now students, so these are some other property of XOR. Suppose if I have a variable A, if this A is XOR n times, okay, you get the answer 0 if n is even, you get the answer A if the n is odd. Right? So suppose for example, uh, if you want to do A X or A. So, I mean, two times you have taken A. So, in this relation, you substitute in place of B, you substitute A. If you do that, how much you get? A bar dot A plus A dot A bar. In place of B, I am substituting A. So, this is 0 plus 0, it is 0. So, A X or A, it is 0. But now you do A X or with A X or with A. So, A X or A is 0 and 0 X or A is A. So, you take four times. So this pattern if you see what you are going to get is if you are doing XOR of a variable n times you get the answer 0 if n is even you get the answer same variable a if the uh, n is odd. Okay. XOR gate is also known as inequality detector or anti coincident detector. What is the meaning of it? So this uh, this terms comes from this two input case students. So what happens is in a XOR gate, okay, if this this is a XOR gate to input XOR gate, so if the output is 1, so it means that the inputs are not same because if you refer this truth table, when the input are same, you are getting the output 0, right, for the first and last combination. If you are getting the output 1, it means that the inputs are not same, okay. So if somebody observe that the output is 1 in a XOR gate, in a two input XOR gate, so somebody can easily say that the inputs applied are not same or basically they are complement to each other in a two input case. So that is why it is known as inequal detector. That means it produces output 1 when inputs are not equal. And the other name of inequality detector is anti coincident detector. Coincident means same, anti coincident is not same. When the input are equal, you get output uh, 0. When the outputs are inequal, you get output 1. That is why it is called inequal detector. Okay. <clears throat> Now, this property are very important students, this property. So, using this most of the gate question, you can easily answer. So, before we go into the questions, let us have a discussion on this property. So, we have seen that A X or 0 is A. So, A X or 0 is A. We have seen A X or 1 is A bar. We have seen this. We have seen now A X or A is 0. A X or A is 0. And A X or A bar if you do, A X or A bar if you do. So, here it is replaced by A bar and here it will be A. So how much you get? It is a bar plus a, you get the answer as 1. So a x or a bar is 1. So what is the conclusion? A variable x or itself produces 0 
a variable x or with its complement it produces 1. Once again, a variable x or with itself is 0, a variable x or with complement is 1. Anything x or with 0, you get the same thing. Anything x or with 1, you get its complements. Okay. So, this is clear, I believe. Now, let us see, students, these four properties. So, A, B, X or B, C is equivalent to, you can take B as common, A, X or C. A, B, X or with B, C is equivalent to B and with A, X or C. So, whenever something like this, you can simply take the B as common and it is A, X or C. You may feel, sir, directly you can take B as common. It is not that way. If you want how this is happening, you again take this relation and substitute in place of A, A, B, in place of B, B, C, you expand it. And finally, you see that this is what you will be getting. Similarly, A XOR with B XOR with AB is A plus B. So, how is it happening if you ask me? So, you see, A XOR B XOR with AB, right? So, let me put a bracket term here. This is A XOR with. So, from this, if I take B as common, you get this is 1 XOR A. 1 XOR A. So, how much you get? This is A XOR with. This is B and uh, how much is 1x or a he is a bar. So, I mean it is equivalent to a x or with a bar b. a x or with a bar b. What is a x or with a bar b? a x or with a bar b is a plus b. So, if you know, if you want to know how is it. So, you again expand by definition a bar b. a x or b is a bar b plus a b bar. a bar b. Okay. Plus a b bar. a a bar b whole complement. So, this is your A bar B plus, this is A and this is your A plus B bar. So, this is your A bar B, this is your A plus it is A B bar. So, you can take A common from these two. If you take A common, 1 plus B bar plus A bar B. So, this is equivalent to A plus A bar B. A plus A bar B can be written as A plus A bar with a plus b. a plus a bar is 1. So, the answer is a plus b. So, now I can say that. So, this is equivalent to a x or a bar b. a x or a bar b is a plus b. So, a x or b with x or with a b is a plus b. a x or with a bar b is a plus b. So, we have seen a x or with a bar b. So, this one if I are simplifying, we are getting a plus b. And a bar b x or with a b bar is again a x or b. So, we know that a x or b is a bar b plus a b bar. But if you do XOR of this variable and this variable, you again get to be X of B. You can again verify this trend the way I did it. So, keeping this property in mind, so let us see how many gate questions we are able to solve now. Okay. So, before that, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, let us solve with this. So, this is the property in case if we need, we will be using this. Okay, na? fine. Okay, this question is asked in gate 2016 of electronics students. The question is, the output of combinational circuit given below is how much? So, what is this expression y? So, these are the options we have. Okay. So, this is A, this is B, this is C, this is C. So, it is an AND gate, output of AND gate is AB. So, its output is ABC. Now, see that uh, this is B. I mean, this is B line, right? So, this input is B and this input is C. So, the output of this is your BC. And what is this output? So, this output is XOR combination of the inputs. So, one of the input is BC, other input is AB because this is coming from this point which is AB and this is coming from this point which is BC. So, this point if I ask you how much is it? So, this is AB XOR with BC. Then what is your Y? Y is XOR combination of the inputs, this and this. So, if you do it, so how much you get? AB XOR with BC XOR with ABC. Yes or no? AB, XOR with BC, XOR with ABC. So, from all these trends, you see that B can be taken out. Based on which property? Based on this property. So, like if you have a common factor, you can take it out. 
So if you take B as common, so how much you get here? So this is A XOR with C XOR with AC. But what is A XOR with C XOR with AC? So using this property, A XOR with C XOR with AC will be A plus C. So this equals to B ended with A plus C or you can say this is C plus C. So answer is option C. Answer is option C. So just in uh, not even one minute we are able to reach the answer. But if you don't know this property students, reaching to this conclusion from this is a time taking job. You can try yourself because you have to find A bar B plus A B bar for this. Then that result and again you will be finding with this one. And lot many times De Morgan's law will come to picture. Again simplification, it will take good amount of time to reach these points. But by knowing property you see just in one or two steps we are able to reach the conclusion. Answer is option C.